In this chapter we will take a quick look at the steps in the life cycle of a securities trade starting from trade execution to settlement of the trade. The detailed processes across trade life cycle, and the IT systems involved in processing securities trades, are covered in the course titled, Demystifying Securities and Capital Markets for IT Professionals available on mondayskills.com. A securities trade is initiated in the front office of the securities firm. An institutional investor would place an order with an investment bank or a broker-dealer. The broker-dealers would execute the trade at a securities trading venue or over-the-counter or may sell the securities to the institutional investor from their own inventory. From this course perspective, we will consider this trade is executed at an authorized trading venue. All transactions executed by the front office will be captured onto a trade blotter. The blotter is typically electronic but can be spreadsheet-based, depending on the instrument traded or the capabilities of the IT systems used in the front office. The basic details captured include the security ID, name of the traded security, trade direction, traded price, quantity, counterparty ID, client or trading book ID, and trade execution time for the transaction. Once the trade has been captured in the blotter, it is sent to the back office for post-trade processing. The back office receives the trade and creates a record of the transaction in the post-trade processing system. This trade data will be enriched by the transaction management system using static data from the securities reference data system. Enrichment process would include adding additional details of the security, counterparty data, settlement date, settlement amount, standing settlement instruction data, etc. Once the trade data has been enriched, the system will perform validation checks for the trade to ensure transaction data is in order. In most jurisdictions, securities regulators require securities trading firms and trading venues to send the trade details to a central trade repository or an authorized reporting mechanism arm, managed by the regulator. The trade information captured is sent to the trade repository in the format specified by the trade repository. The deadline for reporting the trade may differ based on asset class, instrument type, and jurisdiction. The next step in the trade life cycle is trade confirmation. The broker would send a confirmation to the counterparty. The counterparty may also send the trade confirmation. This two-way confirmation process ensures that the trade details recorded by the back office of the counterparties match. The broker would also send a confirmation to the institutional investor. The institutional investor would verify the trade details and send an affirmation to the broker indicating that the trade is in order and they accept the trade details. Trade matching is key to reducing failed trades. Counterparties submit their respective trade instructions to a centralized trade matching system such as DTCCCTM, LSEG Univista, LCHN Clear, etc. Trade matching utilities compare and reconcile the trade instructions received from the buyers and sellers brokers or counterparties to determine if there is a match. Trade matching involves comparing various trade parameters, including security identifier, quantity, price, trade date, settlement date, and counterparty information. The objective of trade matching is to identify any discrepancies or mismatches between the trade instructions and resolve them through exception handling and reconciliation. The trade matching process occurs after trade confirmation and before settlement. Once the trade has been matched, the clearinghouse acting as a central counterparty or the CCP takes over the transaction. The CCP becomes the buyer to the seller of securities and the seller to the buyer of the securities and guarantees the trade settlement. The CCP would communicate the net settlement obligations to the securities firms. The back office of the securities firm in parallel would forecast the securities or cash needed for settlement. If the securities are short, then the front office may borrow securities in the securities lending market or look at other means to meet the settlement obligations. If cash is short, then the securities firm will borrow or use the credit facility to fulfill the settlement obligations. The securities firm's back office will then send the settlement instructions to the clearing house or to the custodian, who in turn will send the settlement instructions to the clearing house. These days, 
actual settlement takes place at the depository. On the settlement day, the depository will facilitate the exchange of securities and payment between buyers and sellers through the clearing house, which is now acting as the central counterparty to the trade. This settlement of securities and cash happens simultaneously and is termed as delivery versus payment settlement. The depository will transfer the ownership of securities from the seller to the buyer of securities in its books. The buyer's cash account with the custodian is credited with the settlement amount. The custodian will inform the institutional investor of the completion of the trade settlement process. In some cases, the seller of the security may not be able to deliver the securities on the settlement date, or the buyer may not be able to arrange funds. This is called a failed trade. In such cases, the back office will work with the clearing house to ensure the settlement of the trade. The buyer may agree to accept securities on a later date, or else the buyer can initiate a buy-in process whereby the clearing firm will approach a market maker to buy the securities. If the buyer of the security is not able to arrange funds, then the securities will be sold in the market to the highest bidder. Any loss due to settlement failure will be borne by the defaulting firm. So we have seen the interconnected processes in securities trade lifecycle that begin with trade initiation in the front office and culminate in trade settlement managed by the back office. It involves trade execution, confirmation, matching, post-trade processing, and ultimately, the exchange of securities and cash. Throughout this life cycle, various market participants, including institutional investors, broker-dealers, clearing houses, custodians, and depositories, play vital roles in ensuring efficient and secure trade settlement. By following standardized procedures, adhering to regulatory requirements, and leveraging advanced technology and systems, the securities industry strives to minimize risks, enhance transparency, and facilitate seamless transactions. Understanding the intricacies of the securities trade lifecycle is crucial for professionals in the industry to effectively navigate the complexities and ensure successful trade execution and settlement.